Hey everybody, welcome to this video on Refer Pain. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I greatly appreciate the time and effort that you guys are taking out of your lives to watch this video and uh, watch these videos for the series for the online course for the knee. Um, I'm going to do my best to uh, run through this diagram and provide you some information on referred pain and the uh, the neurophysiological model for referred pain. Uh, if I if I mess up a little bit, then I mess up a little bit. But um, just I just want to get you this information right now so that you can start incorporating it into your practice with your patients and start communicating more effectively with them because as we incorporate evidence-informed research into our practice, that's basically what happens. Our practice elevates to a new level. Uh, we can communicate on a, grand, a, greater, uh, a greater scope with our patients and we can really uh, help them understand what they're going through with their injuries and their conditions and their pains. So first off, what I'd like to do is give a huge shout out to Thomas Graven Nielsen, who's a PhD and associate professor in Denmark. I contacted him looking for research on referred pain and he was kind enough to email me his 50 page research paper which went into a great amount of detail of pain our current understanding with the biopsychosocial model of the neural matrix of pain and uh, and this is where i got this uh, this schematic from on uh, the neurophysiological model for referred pain but there's a couple of key features for refer pain that i really need you guys to understand before we get into this very cartoonish and terribly handwritten uh, schematic for, for referred pain. So let's run through some of those uh, key features of referred pain. First off, uh, referred pain is felt distant to the initial or local pain area. Referred pain is semi-directional, meaning that it only goes from the local site to the referred site and not backwards. Referred pain is always felt as a deeper sensation where local pain is referred to as a very superficial sensation. Referred pain needs a higher stimulus uh, in order to be felt rather than local pain does. Referred pain is delayed compared to local pain. So local pain comes first, you bang your knee on the coffee table, you immediately feel it. The referred pain further down the leg and into your foot is, is felt afterwards. Referred pain diminishes over time and it diminishes first before local pain does. And the stimulus for the referred pain site isn't really needed, but it might increase the referred pain feeling or sensation. Now this uh, prime example that I can use, uh, I've got two examples. Uh, first example is for patients that have had some type of amputation. Now, We've all had patients that comment or complain of a, uh, a phantom limb pain. Um, you know, like there's, there's no structure that's there, but they feel that referred pain down through that area. So there's no stimulus that is required down through that area. Another example is I had the experience where I came from my dentist where I had a cavity filled and I had my whole face anesthetized. And what was really interesting is that I could actually feel feel a really deep, intense itch right in through my chin. It was extremely painful. But when I went to, when I went to touch the area or scratch the area, everything was anesthetized. I couldn't feel anything anyway. So it was an extremely weird feeling where I had this huge area of anest anesthetic and I had this deep pain at the same time. So it was a very interesting uh, sensation for me. So let's... Um, those are, the, those are the, the seven key features of referred pain. So I really hope that that little tidbit of information um, brings some, some new information to you and a new awareness or understanding for referred pain. So let's, uh, let's get into this schematic for the neurophysiological model for referred pain. Now, for some of us that graduated college a long time ago, the information that we had or that we were given back then um, it really isn't appropriate for today's evidence-informed uh, practices. We were essentially taught that when you banged your leg on a coffee table that there were pain fibers down there and they sent the pain message up to the brain and that's how you perceived the ache or the pain that you felt from banging your knee on the coffee table. Well, we now know that that is completely inappropriate in how we describe and how we communicate with our patients. 
What we do need to realize is that we have these uh, free nerve endings that are called nociceptors. Now these free nerve endings are a type of mechanoreceptor and I talk about these mechanoreceptors in the introductory videos of all of my online courses and in all of my live courses also. And these free nerve endings are also known as nociceptors. Now these nociceptors, they can relay uh, messages of balance, coordination, uh, interoception, kinesthetic awareness, but they can also change and they can send danger messages, not pain messages, they can send danger messages that go through an excitatory synapse up to your primitive brain area. And then that primitive brain area has to decide, is it a danger uh, sort of setting or is it something that we've done before and it's not too big of a deal and we don't really need to have sort of a pain perception uh, for, for, for the body. Um, we, a couple other things we need to remember is that we can stimulate these nociceptors either mechanically, chemically, or thermally. So you bang your knee on the coffee table, that's a mechanical stimulation. Um, you uh, banged your knee on the coffee table, or you sprained your ankle or your knee, and you had an inflammatory response that occurred. Well, that's a chemical sort of stimulus that, that can occur. Um, or if you touched your hand on a hot burning stove, that would be sort of a thermal, um, thermal sort of stimulus for pain. Or if you hold on to an ice cube for a long period of time also, you'll get a bit of a pain message uh, or a pain sensation, sorry. And uh, that will give you that, uh, that thermal stimulus also. So uh, what we have is we have, uh, this is a leg by the way, it's a very cartoonish drawing of a leg. Uh, we have the first site, which is local pain. We have the lower site, which is the referred pain. We have a green area, which surrounds these two dorsal horn neurons. And we have these red arrows that connect the dorsal horn neurons and also send messages, uh, danger messages, up to the brain. Now, these are excitatory messages, and the blue arrows coming back down are inhibitory synapses. Now, how this works, from my best ability to understand, and uh, by all means, I am nowhere near an expert on pain, referred pain. Um, like you, I'm researching every day into the, uh, the newest research that is presented on pain and pain science, and uh, it's just an ever-changing, uh, evolving understanding of pain. So, you bang your knee on a coffee table, and it sends an excitatory synapse, or it, it sends a, uh, a danger message through this excitatory synapse up to your brain, and your brain has to sit there and decide, is this something we've been through before? Is it something that we can really deal with? Do we need to just keep on walking? Or is this something that we need to stop this person right now because they're in danger and, um, and, and there's a possibility of, of things getting worse? So if if the brain decides that uh, this is something that's happened before, it's not that big of a deal, what it'll do is it'll send an, inhib an inhibitory synapse down to the dorsal horn neuron, and you'll, f you, you won't, you'll feel a little discomfort, you'll feel a little pain initially from the banging the knee, but then it goes away pretty quickly. So that's the excitatory synapse, and then the inhibitory synapse sort of diminishing that, uh, that danger message and your ability to perceive pain. Now, if this is something that's really serious, like you really banged your knee on that coffee table, you did a really good job, you know you're gonna have a bruise on that site later on, what will happen is that it will send a danger message through that excitatory synapse and your primitive brain will elicit you the perception of pain because it wants to make you stop from hitting your knee on the coffee table over and over and over again. What's really interesting is that you'll have the local pain where you hit your knee on the coffee table, but then maybe a little while longer, could be seconds, could be minutes, maybe half an hour later, you get this distant, deeper, referred pain site that happens. So my, my interest was how does that happen? Because I've done that before. Um, I've, I've had a valgus stress to my knee, and then later on, maybe about 20 minutes later, maybe about 10 minutes later, I've got this deep, intense ache through my inner osseous membrane, through my tib and fib. So I really wanted to understand how that occurs. Well, what happens is that you have this dorsal, first dorsal horn neuron that gets uh, stimulated, 
and we have this central sensitization process that occurs in and around that dorsal, dors, dorsal horn neuron where you have chemical mediators that will come in and they'll irritate this second dorsal horn neuron. The other thing that occurs is that there is a latent excitatory synapse that connects one dorsal horn to the other. And it takes a little bit of time for that synapse to send a message over to the second one. Now that second dorsal horn neuron also sends a uh, excitatory synapse, a message, a danger message up to the primitive brain and it gives you the perception of having that referred pain. So first you bang your knee, you irritate the first dorsal horn neuron, it sends a message up to the brain, you get this local pain activation sort of perception. It has a latent excitatory synapse that sends a, another danger message up to the brain, which then later on gives you that referred pain sensation. Now remember we talked about in the key features is that local pain comes first, referred pain comes second. Now, in order for that whole process to start to diminish, what will happen is that your brain will send an inhibitory synapse down to the second dorsal horn neuron first, and then your referred pain starts to go. We talked about that in the key features also. Referred pain comes second, referred pain leaves first. So the referred pain goes, and then once this inhibitory synapse has unexcited this dorsal horn neuron, then this will start to unexcite also. You get an inhibitory synapse that, uh, inhibitory messages that happen, and then later on the local pain goes last. So that's a very basic explanation of the neurophysiological model for pain. I hope that you guys really uh, understood the words that were coming out of my mouth and, uh, and understood the, uh, the types of stimulus, the fact that it's nociceptors that are sending these danger messages to your brain, uh, the fact that local pain comes first, referred pain comes second, but then when that whole process is starting to diminish, the referred pain leaves first, the local pain leaves last, and that we've got these two dorsal horn neuron connections and this latent excitatory synapse and this central sensitization process that can also assist in stimulating that, that uh, second uh, order dorsal horn neuron. So again, um, there is a far better drawing in the PDF download that you have below this video. I would really encourage you guys to download that, that, uh, that PDF, print it off, hand it to your patients, explain to them exactly the process of referred pain and local pain so that they can better understand how to, how to work with uh, what they're feeling, what they're going through with their injuries or their conditions. I would really challenge you guys to start to think differently about how you communicate with your patients about referred pain and pain in general. I would also challenge you guys to get onto the Explain Pain website and the Explain Pain Facebook pages. It's just an absolute wealth of information on pain and referred pain, uh, referred pain here. Um, and it will absolutely change how you communicate and how you understand pain um, that you're going through or, or pain uh, that your patients are going through. So again, thanks for watching this video. In the next video, I'm going to educate you and teach you on some of the most commonly referred pain patterns for the knee. Again, thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.